Joanna Chua, Chief Economist Asia Pack for City. Joins us on the show. Morning, Joanna. Hi, morning. Um, we were, we were, we, uh, you probably heard us talking, kind of sure. mulling over. Okay, intervention can have a short, very, very short term immediate effect. It can have an acute effect, like a jab of a needle uh, to fight whatever infection you have. How long is this going to last, though? I, I thought that they, the reason they hadn't intervened for years and years was they knew that it doesn't really work. You throw a lot of good money, you get a short term effect, but you get a lousy return on investment. Well, you know, I, look, I think there's still a lot of uncertainties given how, how it, de it depends how much sustained intervention we actually get. And of course, we still have to see how the events unfold in Japan and whether the situation can be contained. So we'll have to see, but I think, you know, a lot of people have been expecting that, you know, there was already a lot of rumors going around in the run up to this event that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the price action so far is encouraging. Let's just hope there's actually a fundamental improvement in what's happening on the ground in Japan at the moment. Let me show the folks a, uh, just a, a headline from the uh, business section of the uh, main English paper here today. I want to flip it here. To talk about. You know, we are talking a bit about, earlier about GM and a Louisiana plant being affected by uh, the supply disruption uh, in and out of Japan. Here's one in the post. It says, Japan car makers in China facing damaging supply crunch. Um, you know, I know this is, this is, the, this is the just-in-time inventory era, but, um, you know, is the media taking, you know, warnings and turning them into uh, decrees. I'm just kind of wondering whether the uh, the, the Asia well, macro impact has, re has it really been felt that dramatically. Well, you know, a lot of people were trying to figure out to what extent J what's happening in Japan is going to impact Asia. And I think on the one hand, if you look at it, Japan as a source of final demand, it's not really a huge, huge source of final demand because Japan's share to Asia's exports to Japan have already been declining over mm -hmm. the last 15 years. But I think there's a concern on the supply side because you know Japan and our, our analysts have said is a sort of you know has, is a significant critical element of a lot of the global supply supply chains in electronics, tech, autos, etc. So I think, for example, within Asia, there could be a short-term disruption that would impact countries like Korea, like Thailand, etc. Mm -hmm. But on the one hand, there's also sort of the medium to longer term potential sort of uh, gains because of the fact that if this supply disruption in Japan could also hinder some of the Japanese companies, there could be some, you know, if, if there could be substitution of sources of inputs out of Japan elsewhere, some of the companies, for example, in Korea and Taiwan, which compete in spaces in a lot of products with Japan mm -hmm. could in the medium longer term also benefit. But again, it also brings back to the fact that, you know, Japan also has a lot of overseas investments outside of Japan with it around Asia. ODI, right? So these production, oh, these production plans, yeah. you know, okay. whatever, in Thailand, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, they still rely on some critical components from Japan. Right. Uh, but of course, depending on how these things unfold in Japan, uh -huh. I think medium to longer term, I would imagine okay. Japanese companies probably want to diversify their production base a, a little bit more and we could see, you know, in the medium longer term. Joanna, say hi to Sri he was sharing, he's been sharing duty with me in, uh, at the Tokyo desk. Uh, thanks a lot for that, Bern. Good to see you back. Uh, Joanna, hello. I wanted to put this to you. You know dollar-yen at 80 is often talked about as the line in the sand, that trigger action in terms of intervention, but is there an upside target on dollar-yen that is favored by the exporters on a trade-weighted basis that is a tolerable uh, dollar-yen cross in terms of the export competitiveness? You know, I, I don't really cover Japan, so, you know, obviously the dollar yen is a cover, and I only cover Asia and emerging Asia. So I, I, I'm not really sort of the person that we should be talking about the yen. Let me pick up here, Joe, and ask you about some of the near-term fallout effects for Japanese companies when it comes to the situation unfolding. Of course, currency being one thing and, and um, you know, getting some form of stability right now for these companies. What's your feeling on what they will do in terms of investing overseas, whether they will be relocating resources down the track? Well, you know, I think near term right now, most of the, of course, the overseas direct investment decisions are probably all going to be delayed, right, as pe people try to figure out what's happening in onshore in Japan. But medium and longer term, I do think that we'll have continued, we've already had over the last, you know, number of years, uh, you know, fast growing overseas direct investment from Japan within Asia. Asia takes the largest share of overseas direct investment from Japan, and China obviously is a very large one, but the fastest growing destination has actually been in Southeast Asia. For example, Thailand, uh, for example, Malaysia, Vietnam, etc. And I could see that, you know, Japan might relocate in other, you know, continue investments in production capacity in more geologically stable areas of parts of Asia. Uh, I think that could continue to be a longer term trend. Joanna, let me ask you, uh, on the J Japan disaster, earthquake, tsunami, uh, nuclear disaster, oil trending higher, Libya, the no-fly zone now, oil trending higher as well. Intervention in FX markets to try and bring yen down, pop dollar back up, which is what oil is priced in with oil going higher. What does all this mean for 
not so much recovery in emerging Asia, but more the rate trajectory. No, I, I think that's the thing. I mean, after what happened in Japan, we had huge unwind of positions of risk assets, rates rallied. People are very worried about what's happening. But I actually personally, of course, there's a concern about the growth implication. But I'm actually still concerned about, a lot about sort of the inflationary implications of what's happening in the Middle East. Uh, at the same time, sort of this global shift away from nuclear energy, both of which is bullish for oil and other commodities. And that could have inflationary consequences. So, for example, so far, we've already seen RBI hike interest rates yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think so far we haven't really made any changes to our calls on monetary policy stance, given that I think despite the growth concerns, uh, which I think we shouldn't exaggerate too much, mm. there's also the concern about inflation and the longer-term inflation. I, sh I should mention that some of these, uh, some of these uh, pictures that we're seeing here are what happened earlier in the week when people just didn't know what to expect and there was a little bit of, not, well, there was substantial, I don't know if it's hoarding or just people buying in advance but cleared a lot of the supermarket and convenience store shelves. I saw that in several cases. You couldn't even get a sandwich at 7-Eleven uh, downstairs. But th that's been, uh, the stocks, the shelves have been restocked and that situation is pretty much blown over. I guess. Uh, Joanna, finally, before we let you go, is there a, um, you know, we, we're, we're talking somewhat in, in you know, academic terms here. Is there an example of uh, a country, uh, for whatever reason, which is, uh, you know, better barriered against what is coming out of Japan? Uh, w would it be Korea? Are they more self-contained? Are they more self-reliant uh, well, in terms of the uh, supply chain? Well, no, Korea still relies on certain critical components on the supply chain, so it's not really... I mean, obviously, it's going to be yeah. countries that Memory are... Memory and screens, that sort of thing. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you're in Asia, the more domestic demand-driven economies that are re less reliant on sort of this sort of tech supply chain, lower value in the chain, are probably a little bit more insulated. So mm. obviously, you know, countries like India, Indonesia, I mean, their economies are still doing a relatively, should be right. relatively there, more yeah, insulated. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. than what's happening in the more open economies in okay. Asia. Okay, Joanna, good to talk to you. Thank you for your time. Joanna Chua from City Live.